Hello and welcome to another video and um, it's going to be another stripped down video today from me Steve um, from Mad About Hoovers and um, what we're going to be doing today is um, a strip down on a Hoover Senior which you can see just there. Um, the Hoover Senior dates from the uh, 1960s, well this one does anyway, the uh, 652A. This model is actually uh, one of the very latest models to uh, come out, which was the 6525C. And uh, this one here, it dates from 1974. So it is one of the very, very late models, which actually came out at a very, very similar time to the Hoover Senior Ranger, which was its successor. Um, all I'm going to do today is show how to get the hood off it, how to take the motor off, and how to get to the bearings in the motor. Because I've noticed a couple of collectors um, have in the past uh, taken these to pieces but not been able to do anything with the motor uh, because they haven't known how to take a motor apart on a, um, on a senior like this. They've done juniors but uh, there seems to be lots and lots of videos about juniors being stripped down but not so many about the, uh, the seniors. So what we're going to do is do one of these now. So I'll just get the uh, the camera angle down onto the uh, workbench there, or should I say the um, the sideboard. I'm just make sure I get this right, because uh, we don't want to be too high and we don't want to be too low on it, do we? Because that wouldn't be any good at all. Right, I think that's because it's only a very low cleaner. We can, we can angle it quite low down on the on the on the work now. So what we're going to do first of all is um, we're going to take the uh, the bag off the back. So I'm sure we all know how to do that. So we're just going to literally take it off the top clip, and um, we're going to say, hang on, I don't think that camera's quite right, is it? Let me just check on there again. Yes, it is. That I'm sure that'll be all right. So we're just going to take the uh, the bag off the back, which is a simple case of unclipping it like so, and get that out of the way. Put that over to the side, um, and then we are going to knock the handle bail down, and we're going to turn the cleaner over onto the base like so. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me just uh, check that we can. See that okay? I think we can just about see that. So we're going to remove first of all the uh, the brush roller, and we're going to remove the belt. There we go. Okay. So that one's a uh, genuine 652 belt. I've noticed now that these are getting harder to obtain because obviously these are getting older and older and older, these, the, these cleaners. Is that these, uh, these belts are now getting more expensive and harder to obtain. You can still get them on eBay, but you've got to be careful of the um, electro part and some of these pattern ones because I've bought some of these before and um, they've snapped within uh, literally in a few minutes of putting them on the cleaner. They just cleanly snapped in two. And it's happened to every single belt that I've had, which is like a Qualtex part, I think it is. Uh, it's either Qualtex or Electric Pass, one of the two that I used to get from uh, Buy Spares, and they were absolutely hopeless belts. Now these are saying model 652 on them, they're actually uh, very old stock. I actually stumbled across some of these uh, a little while back. Um, they were in a big bag of old stock Hoover belts, and so far they seem to be lasting better. So we take the brush roll out, and we're taking the belt out. And just put them over here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, hood off, which is the two screws here, and they are Phillips. So if I just get myself a Phillips driver. Into reverse. Right, that's one. And that's two. 
Now those screws won't fall out when you turn this over, so no need to worry about that. Now we're going to turn the cleaner over very carefully. Put the handle right down onto the, uh, the bench. We can take the hood off. Nice. So what we've got here, I put a uh, light bulb in the front of here. I don't know how well we can see this. Uh, that light bulb there, that's actually, um, it's a 28 watt halogen light bulb, which is uh, basically, it's a small bayonet cap. It's basically a house, a house bulb, but they actually work pretty well in here. And I've found that they don't tend to overheat the hood, which is rather good news. Because originally this didn't have the headlight bulb, or the holder, or the lens in the front. It was basically had a clear, uh, sorry, it had a, uh, an opaque lens which had no light bulb behind it. So I decided that, because it was quite a good example, that I would take the bulb holder out of my older senior and put it in this one. So I had to remove it from the old one, basically put it in this one, and, it, and wire it in with a little bit of extra wiring and hey presto. When we uh, turn it on, we have a light bulb. Now I'm not going to have the, uh, the cleaner on a lot this evening because it's quite late in the evening and I don't want to be disturbing the neighbours with, uh, with noise. So this is actually going to be quite a quiet video as basically as we're going to be stripping down the, the cleaner. So first of all what we're going to do is we'll take off the, uh, the top bearing which is a flat bladed screwdriver and there are three screws. One. Two. Three. Like so. We just lift off the top bearing. And the last time I had this open, I just put a little bit of grease inside that top bearing just to keep the, uh, the motor turning nicely on the top. Now what we need to do is to take this fan off. So what I would normally do is I would grab, turn it over to the bottom. I would put my uh, cloth on top of the fan. Now you obviously can't see what I'm doing, but basically I'm just grabbing it with the uh, cloth on the inside of the fan, jamming a screwdriver into the motor underneath, and what I do then is I unscrew the top fan, which loosens and comes off like so. And that gives access to the top part of the motor, which is showing the carbon brushes, the commutator. Okay. Now then, what we want to do next is we want to take off the next four screws, and there's one here, 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 and here. This one here will have a clamp attached to it, which clamps your cables to the side. And basically we're going to put those in a little slightly different place so they don't mix the screws up. Take the bulb out as well so I don't get smashing that. Two, one in here, that's three. There's also a little clamp onto there which holds the wiring to the bulb holder, which has actually got a loose connection on which I need to tighten up there actually. I'll just do that now while I'm thinking about it. I think what it was, when I put this bulb holder on, I didn't quite tighten these down all the way, did I? And so obviously the vibrations of it, it's a good job really, I had this open, because otherwise that would have uh, stopped working and the screw would have fallen out. So we'll tighten those right back up. There we go. So we've got one, two, three, and there's one more here in this corner. Okay. Now at this point, you need to take the carbon brushes out of the motor. That's basically one screw here and one screw on the other side. So we take this screw out, very very careful not to lose it. It's only a very tiny screw. There's one 
and then there's one on the other side, just here. So we're having a bit of a big, I know I put a bit of weight back on since uh, I did my original diet a few years ago, it's a bit of a pain but there we go, it usually happens when people lose a lot of weight they end up putting some of it back on again. At least I'm not massive like I was before. There we go, right, so we're going to just lift off the retainer and pop out the carbon brush and that's quite short now but it's got enough in there just to, uh, to be carrying on with, that's the one side. And there's the one from the other side, again around about the same length. And uh, the new ones of those are quite short anyway. I mean, then it's not as if they uh, they spin fast these motors that they're going to need to have massive long uh, brushes on. Now at this point, what we will do is we'll take out the screw on the back of here. Literally, there's a screw on the back just here behind this um, junction box, and we'll take that out to loosen the junction box off. So I'll use my electric screwdriver just to undo that. There we go. So our junction box is now loose on the back. It can be pulled loose and free. Now what we need to do is remove this top part of the motor. So we just lift it clean off. Now, this is important that you've taken out the, the carbons first, otherwise they'll go springing straight back out as soon as you lift it off of the, comm the, uh, the commutator there. Okay, So that essentially is your carbon brush holder, the, uh, the top of the motor housing. Right, now what we need to do is we need to take off one, two, three, four flat bladed screwdriver screws again which hold the motor to the bottom of the case. And that's one, two, three, And four. Like so. That will now enable this motor to lift out of the bottom like so. At this point the back will start to fall down because you're reducing its centre of gravity so we need to knock that right down. And it's possible then to lift the motor up into this angle, like so. Right, now what we need to try and do, and this can be tricky sometimes, is to remove the spindle. So we can grab hold of the commutator at the back to stop it from turning. And basically, this is a reverse thread, and it's actually coming off quite easily. So we're basically able to just screw it as if you're tightening it, and it'll come right off. And then we can remove the fan. Very, very simple. But sometimes they can be very, very stiff. So you need to be a bit patient. You can hold onto the commutator around the back, be gentle with it, or put some, uh, put some rag underneath your hand. Or if that fails, then you know it's not advisable really to be gripping the back of the shaft with mole grips because. If you grip that with mole grips and it damages it, that is, to, that is the part that spins around in the sleeve bearing. Okay, so you need to find another way of steadying the motor without trying to grip that if, if possible. Now I know you're not supposed to touch the commutator either, but what you could do is to put some cloth over the commutator and grab hold of that really firmly. And usually that's enough to be able to twist the fan off and get this going. Right. So what we've got just inside here are two little washers which have just fallen off. Basically they came off there and there's another one, that's three. These are what we call the spacers. So those just sit on top of the shaft there and they help to keep the fan away from here. So we'll put those actually in the fan. And then we have another 
tiny little part here which comes off. Well, what we can do is to actually grab hold of the, the armature from the top and we can lift it out at this point. But underneath will be a little bush like this. So we don't want to lose that. So we just remove that there. And that then gives us access to the bottom bearing, which is just here. So we can apply some a small amount of grease to that. So we get my spray grease here, and I can put some grease on this bottom bearing. All around the bottom bearing. Turn it back over again. And we can, let me just get this camera off here. What we can see in there is the other side of the bearing. So we can, if we want to, just put a little bit of grease inside there like that. And that is the, uh, that's the lower bearing, okay? So that, that's pretty simple really, is to, uh, to get access on the Hoover Senior, like so. Right, now this is our armature. Let me just make sure we can see that, we can. So essentially what we're gonna be checking for on that armature is any damage to any of these segments. Now this is a little bit black, but it's it's basically okay that that armature is. It's a little bit warm, but um, nothing really. I've seen a lot worse than this, I'll tell you. Some of the other seniors I've stripped down. This has been that worn. There's been ridges out of it, and it's very heavy. It's actually very, very, very good quality part. Is that? So what we're going to do is we're going to start to put it back together again. Now that we've all our lower bearing, so we can first of all drop our armature back into the lower bearing like so, turn it over, we can put our bushing back into here like so and then we put our spacer washers on on top okay and then we put our fan back on it's worth noting as well that you should check the fan to make sure there aren't any damage to the uh, the veins on the fan, this is a metal fan like uh, aluminium there very good quality they used in the olden days. You could also uh, take this time to just have a clean up underneath there, but it hasn't been long since this was last apart, so I'm not going to do that on this, basically. So I want to try and keep this to one part of a 30 minute video. So now we can screw the uh, pulley back on here, like so, and we're screwing it in the reverse thread, so it's almost as if we're untightening it. So again, we put our cloth on the commutator at the back and turn the fan to tighten the pulley. That's all we need to do. Don't over tighten it, just tight enough. Right, so that's the fan done. Now we turn the motor back over and put it back into the, the base. Now we can put the four screws, one, two, three, four, that secure it to the bottom of the case back in. So one, two. I'm using the flat bladed driver for this because the um, electric screwdriver, it does come with that type of head, but with these older machines, you need to exercise a little bit more care with them, really, that you don't go slipping off and damaging things with it. So. Sometimes it is better just to use a standard screwdriver and on the older machines like this, it, it, I think it does help really. I prefer to use that with Phillips heads or Torx heads. When they're flat blade, they're easy to be knocked off the head of the screw. Right, so that's the last one of those in. Now we're gonna put the screw back into the junction box just to secure it at the bottom. That one I will use the electric screwdriver for because it's a Phillips head screw. Being careful not to take the head off the screw as well because they are quite fragile. So that's that done. Now just take your wires out of the way 
and we're going to put the top back on, which is this part here. Making sure that the yellow wire here comes through the gap in the side. Okay. And we're going to put our screws back in. We're going to put this one back in first, and then we're going to put that one in. This is the one with the um, the clamp on the side for the wiring. Come on, in you go. That's it. And we want that one in. And then we want the one at the front in here. Not forgetting the little um, mounting for the wire to the headlight bulb. And there we go. And then we want the one round the back. Like so. Okay, now at this stage, I'm going to put the fan back on the top. That goes that way round, the same way as you took it off. Again, just lightly spin it on. It'll tighten itself up when the motor starts anyway, so as long as it's reasonably tight, that's fine. Think hand tight. Now we want to put our brush back in. It's one that side and one that side. Now depending on which way you took them out, sometimes when you put them back in it can make the armature a little bit clicky, like that. But it soon uh, works itself out, it soon sorts itself out, just that. So push the spring back in. Put the clamp back on, like so. Same on this side, we want to push the spring back in. It can be a little bit fiddly, so a bit of patience with them. All the way in, and then put our clamp back on. Making sure not to trap the spring, that's fine. Then put our little tiny screws in. These side here, the connections to the lamp will go underneath the screw as well. The little tiny circular connectors. Do that nice and tightly, because what happens if you don't do it nice and tightly is what happens here, they come loose. Why have I got a um, shake proof washer underneath here? That doesn't belong on there, I must apologise for that, that uh, goes on something else. Put that screw back on there. As long as it's got a washer underneath the screw, that's all that matters. Be a little bit fiddly here because because uh, I'm working on the other side of the motor and I'm up against the clock here to try and get this done before 30 minutes before the camera cuts off. This camera is an absolute pain in the arse, I tell you now. It only gives you 30 minutes recording time before it cuts itself off and then you've got to either get the, uh, the editor out on the windows or make a part two video. And um, I wish this camera would just carry on recording over the 30 minutes but it seems to have this feature where it stops recording after it's been recording for 30 minutes. Uh, it's a damn nuisance. The old camera didn't used to do that, it would carry on recording until you were ready. Right, so the yellow wire has gone back onto that connection there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put the top bearing on. So we'll put a bit of scrape grease again in the top bearing. Not too much, just enough. And we're going to put the top back on the motor. I think that that is the one that we had the shape-proof washer underneath here. There's a little tag there that holds the yellow wire in position. Tighten that down. And there is that one. And then um, 
I've got one more here. There we go. So that's the motor back together. We've got the light bulb back in the front and we'll just give it a quick test. There we go. What we're going to do is put the hood back on. Uh, if the video cuts off on me abruptly, it'll be because the camera's timed out and I think I'm at 26 minutes in so it should be alright for another 4 minutes. I really must get another camera to be honest because um, I can't keep having this limited by half an hour sessions all the time. This is Panasonic as well, a Lumix one, it's not a bad camera but I really can't be arsed with this 30 minute limit on everything. That's one. Two. Take this out as well. Put the belt and the brush roll back on. In fact, we'll just put the um, belt on first. Make sure that my brush roll's the right way round. Push it in, put the belt back on, like so, and put the base plate back on. That's fine, stand it up, and now we can put our bag back on. Uh, yes, I'll put the bag back on now. This again, it's a uh, pattern part bag, it's not the original on this one. But I think it does look quite nice with this cleaner. This one's the one with all the uh, the four heights on as well, it's the later model. This hasn't got the pedal on the side, it's got the button. So then we can connect our bag back to the top. Just put it back on the floor. I shall just quickly plug it in and test it again. That's great. So there we go. That is how we take apart a senior motor done in half an hour and uh, allows us access to grease the top and bottom bearings and access to the carbon brushes and um, I shall be bidding you farewell until the next time we do a stripped down video. Bye for now.